So welcome you all, sir. I feel honored to welcome Padmashri Dr. Mahatme. He is a member of Rajya Sabha and Professor Dr. Radhika Tandon, RP Center Ames, Mr. Kumar Rahul, Secretary Health, come MDNHM Punjab. So he'll also uh, likely to join us. So Padmashri, Professor Dr. Jagatram, Director PGI Chandigarh, Dr. Jagdeep Singh Basur, he is SP and PCB Haryana, he is with us. Dr. Rana Singh, SP or UT Chandigarh, uh, they are looking after NPCB program. So, Professor Dr. Sonu Goyal from Department of Community Medicine, PGI. Dr. Rana J. Singh from the Union. Uh, Mr. Arun Verma, his Director of Finance and Operations with Cypher. All of our panelists, Dr. Shok Sharma, Dr. Shakeen Singh, Dr. Amit Gupta, Dr. Ramesh, Dr. Rohit. They are all of our Konya heroes. They were awarded Konya Hero Awards uh, last year. The attending ophthalmologists, NGOs who have been associated with us in CBBF, uh, that is Cornea Blindness Backlog Free Movement since 2015, the Department of Community Medicine, PGI, NPCB and VI, and all the participants on Zoom. So you are all welcome, sir. Thank you. Next. So, sir, the National Eye Donation Fortnight, it is observed every year from 25th August to 8th September, as everybody knows. And it is a campaign that aims to create mass awareness about the importance of eye donation and to motivate people to pledge their eyes for donation after death. So as we know that uh, because of COVID-19 pandemic, there is an unusual fallout. Eye donations have uh, seen a drastic fall. Nationally, fewer donations have led to a serious shortage of the corneal tissue, which are needed for transplants to restore the vision in people suffering from loss of eyesight due to irreparable damage of the tissue. There has been a uh, decrease in eye donations and number of uh, keratoplasty surgeries during uh, COVID pandemic. The opportunity that uh, exists for us, for all the uh, eye banks to grow rapidly and sustainably by leveraging global best practices with the leading eye banks, uh, many eye banks, uh, the in charge of the eye banks, they have joined us. And against this background, actually, Cypher and Department of Community Medicine and School of Public Health, uh, PJMEA, we have planned this event in collaboration with National Program for Control of Blindness, Punjab, Haryana, and UT Chandika. So all are welcome. Next. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Jagdeep Singh Basur. He's SPO NPCB and VI Haryana. And uh, Dr. Rana Singh, he's SPO NPCB VI UT Chandigarh. So kindly, Dr. Basur, you may present your report first and, and uh, the suggestions to improve the situation. So, Dr. Jagdeep Singh, are you with us? Yeah, I am with you, but okay. I am unable to share, sir, my PPT. Uh, Kindly allow. You have disabled the, the participants uh, screen sharing. Uh, no, uh, try now, sir. Try now. Uh, try now, please. Everyone? Yeah, you are audible. At the outset, I would like to thank all the organizers, seniors, especially Dr. Rakesh Gupta sir, for giving me this opportunity. Today, I would like to highlight some of the initiatives which we have taken in the last one and a half years to reduce corneal blindness in the state of Haryana. <laughs> As you are all aware that... Uh, all except speakers may please keep uh, keep yourself muted. Dr. Harpreet, uh, please keep yourself muted. As you are aware that corneal blindness is the major contributor to the load of blindness. In the persons above 50 years of age, it is second leading cause of the cataract, contributing to almost 8.2% to the load. In the younger age group, it is the leading cause of corneal blindness, contributing almost 38%. Renovoc is committed to clear the corneal blindness backlog from the state. In this direction, we have taken a landmark decision. We are providing aid of 7,500 in addition to 7,500 being provided by Government of India for each case of Retroplasty being done by free by NGOs, private practitioners, or medical colleges. 
I am happy to share that there is no pending liability toward any NGO or private practitioner in the state of Haryana. We have a step. We are in the process of establishing three new eye banks in the government medical colleges, Karnal, Mewat, and Sonipat. We have already sanctioned and transferred 40 lakhs each to all of them. This will make all the medical colleges uh, proficient with eye banks. We have started last year. We started 22 new eye donation centers in all the district hospitals of the Haryana. We have sanctioned and put in place 22 eye donation counselors in each of the district hospitals. There was uh, some shortage and uh, a problem in some districts, shortage of ophthalmologists. To log this, we have trained 66 of our paramedical ophthalmic assistants in cornea retrieval programs. We gave them training from different uh, government and registered private eye banks and now they are certified for corneal retrieval and they are doing excellent job. We have a dedicated 108 toll free number. Anybody who is willing to donate cornea can call 108. In 2019-20, we could get 1,660 eyeballs and keratoplasty was 608. During the financial year 2020-21, as pandemic raised, we still we could achieve 534 keratoplasties and eyeball collection were 854. In the current year, up to July 2021, we have done 163 keratoplasties and eyeball collections were 249, despite first quarter being washed out due to second wave of the COVID. 35th National Fortnight was celebrated all over the state with the zeal, newspaper ads, radio jingles, TV interviews, voting, and uh, pledges were made. In future planning, we are planning to survey in the community for the load of corneal blindness in the state and will bring all the corneal blind patients who need keratoplasty to the uh, private practitioners, eye banks or registered NGOs. We are also planning to start keratoplasty at some district hospitals after suitable training of eye surgeons. Thanks for the patient listening. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Dr. Jagdeep. I think Haryana is doing pretty well in uh, eye banking. And uh, we are sure that uh, with the uh, with the SPO and PCB like uh, Dr. Jadeep, so uh, it will progress. the The situation will improve um, post pandemic, and we all all the states they need to learn from him. So thank you, Dr. Jadeep. So you. Dr. Rana, uh, are you with us? Yeah. Dr. Rana. Uh, Hello. And PCB UT. Yeah. Hanji, Hanji, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, Dr. Rana Singh, I, on behalf of this national program, program of sort of this uh, NPCB Chandigarh, uh, we have uh, about four centers in our state. state. Uh, two are the government and two are privates. And the total cornea collection for the year of 2020 20 and 21, we have uh, about 170 cornea collections and we have utilized 161 that is keratoplasty is done in the year 2020 and 21 is a 161 okay now the this program anything else sir so uh, dr rana do you have any future plans to improve the situation if you have if you this want to have more eye banks or eye donation centers you may tell about that Eye donation centers, we have only four eye donation centers. We may improve the, this one. Any other, if anybody, uh, other center will come. Otherwise, oh. Dr. Shok Sharma's cornea cleaning and that Bharat Vikas Pasha, these are the two private centers are here with us. And uh, PGI and the sector Bhatti, GMCH is also. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rana. So actually, uh, in UT, actually, Dr. Ahmed Gupta, 
Dr. Shok Sharma, uh, uh, the uh, and uh, ophthalmologists in uh, medical college, uh, they are doing extremely good job, yes. and uh, we do hope that uh, uh, the situation, as the situation improves, the eye donations and the keratoplasties will improve. Yes. So yes. thank you, thank you, Dr. Rana, thank and uh, actually, and as PO and PCB Punjab could not join us, uh, so now I'll request. Uh, Dr. Sonu. So, Dr. Sonu, uh, can you introduce uh, the guests of honor should I, or should I do it? Sir, please continue, sir. Okay. So, we have with us uh, uh, Dr. Radhika Tandon. Uh, she is a professor of ophthalmology, RP Center, Ames, New Delhi. And uh, she has uh, many awards to her credit. So, in 1993, she had gold medal by Royal College of Surgeons at Indra. And uh, she has attended Global Eye Banking Leadership Summit in Seattle, US. In 2012, in 2013, she, she was member of the expert committee for National Organ and Tissue Transplant Organization. In 2015, she was appointed as a technical expert. As I told you earlier also, that uh, because of the efforts of Dr. Radhika Tandon and Madam Bini Mahajan, she was then uh, principal secretary health and now she's uh, chief secretary Punjab. And uh, they initiated that uh, cornea blindness backlog free initiative. In 2016, she was president of iBank Association of India, vice president Association of uh, Banks of Asia, iBanks of Asia, advisor member of the Global Alliance of iBank Associations. In 2017, she was member of the advisory committee, National Program for Control of Blindness. And in 18, she was chairperson, NPCB and VI subcommittee on elimination of corneal blindness, MHFW. So Dr. Radhika, uh, will request you to let us know about uh, your views on CBBF Punjab and the way forward to improve the situation of eye banking. So post COVID. So thank you, Dr. Ram, uh, Radhika. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, respected honorable member of parliament, Dr. Mahatme. Uh, Director PGI, Dr. Jagat Ram sir, all the respected dignitaries present and of course the hosts um, Cypher Global as well as the Department of Public Health and School of Community Medicine, PGI Chandigarh. Uh, I'm very, very grateful given this opportunity to participate in today's program. And um, I uh, would like to congratulate you on having um, shown a tremendous um, uh, drive and initiative in getting all the right people together and for also continually thinking what are the hurdles that one faces and uh, always taking steps to improve. Uh, the important thing I would like to say is that uh, sometimes mm -hmm. we have some problems which are always um, uh, you know, caught up in a complication and we're not able to solve it because there are many agencies involved. So that is one problem that we face. And with the help of Dr. Mahatme's words, I think these hurdles can be removed. Simple example often is that there is a, a, a tremendous work that the government is doing and the NPCB and visual impairment program is a wonderful program. But still, sometimes there is a little bit of rigidity in the finances and the way the funds are to be spent. So a little flexibility can be allowed. So for example, the money when it is released to an NGO or a private institution, it is used in a particular way. But some of the government institutions, they also do require money, but they would not be in the same heading. So even if, say, the consumables for surgery are being provided, but then, say, giving a nice certificate to the donor family, or giving some recognition. So sometimes these little things become difficult and all the I banks working in government institutions are sometimes having to partner with uh, private uh, institutions and NGOs. So definitely we should encourage this public private partnership, but still when our own government is so motivated, we just want it to go to their ears that we want a little bit of flexibility. Um, the other point I would say is that um, it is remarkable. Uh, I, I would again like to congratulate the uh, government of Punjab because they have always made it an effort to uh, use their resources to support this activity. The government of Punjab is one of the few Punjab governments where even when the rules were passed uh, in 2014, 
they had modified it according to their state's requirements. So, for example, the qualification of surgeons who can do the surgery, they had modified it according to their state's requirement. The other thing is the price to be charged for the uh, uh, registration of transplant centers and eye banks. Earlier, it was very high. It was something like two or three lakhs. Then they reduced it, but even then they've kept it a little higher. They kept it at 10,000, which is also a good thing because this is a serious issue being registered. So it is a good thing that they have used their own uh, state specific requirements and they have put. So in this regard, I would say if the government of Punjab is willing and maybe other states, then again in the rules, they can state one sentence that technically I is different from the other organs. So being clubbed with all the other organs, it may not be possible to change the act, but we can definitely frame rules specific to eyes and cornea donation. So this is one important fact. If we start changing the act, it I think will be a very big hurdle. We will waste a lot of years, but if we can modify this in the rules, then we can do it within one or two years itself. And the other thing is, one thing we should be very clear that we should convey to the ministry responsible for the registration, which is health and education, medical education, that registration of any eye bank or corneal transplant center should not be held up. And if it is a case of renewal of registration and they have submitted their uh, app application in time, and there may be some technical reason why inspection cannot be held. It should be deemed as continued so that they don't have to stop. Otherwise, many times the eye bank or the transplant center has to completely stop the activity uh, because of the legal requirements. So this is one thing that we can have a, in the rules only we can have the sentence that if registration is finished and if the um, for some administrative reason, the inspection is not held, then it should be deemed as continuation and it should be done as soon as possible. Finally, um, I would like to say that um, we should not forget that we have a very unhealthy demand for corneas because we are having a lot of cases which are due to trauma, infection, which are not properly controlled at the right time. So simultaneously, we must make sure that uh, we a message should go that corneal infections and trauma should be controlled at the proper time. So we must make sure that the um, unnecessary requirement for corneas is also controlled. So we have to have, as you said, this is cipher, which is going for uh, education of the public. So there also we can have a leaflet to school children, mothers, young mothers, how to avoid vitamin A deficiency and um, keratomalacia. Similarly, how to avoid injuries to children. Uh, for farmers, how to avoid getting very bad infections. So certain things like this, I think also, we, so at least after 5, 10, 15 years, this 38% of the young 0 to 49 group, 38% corneal blindness, I think that is can be controlled by proper education. So once again, I would like to congratulate everybody. Uh, all the work that you are all doing is tremendous. And um, this systematic approach of having uh, an idea of how many corneas are needed and the sharing of resources across agencies and across states. I think this is a wonderful model and uh, I really congratulate all of you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Radhi, uh, Dr. Radhika Tandon. So actually I shared uh, doc with the Dr. Radhika Tandon a draft uh, recommendations, list of uh, draft recommendations and what are the issues which are ailing us. And uh, I also shared it with the Dr. Mahatme. So they are now actually well aware already because they are passionate people in uh, eye banking. And uh, I'll, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Kumar Rahul, he's our MD NHM from Secretary Health. So he couldn't join us, but I may let you know that he's a 2000 batch uh, uh, cadre, a Punjab cadre IS officer. And he has served as deputy commissioner in many districts of Punjab and has also held very prominent posts like uh, secretary home before being appointed as secretary come MD NHM Punjab. And uh, he is very proactive as an administrator and who is doing a very good job. And uh, we'll convey the deliberations of this uh, uh, consultation to him as well. So now I like to uh, request Padmashiri Professor Dr. Jagatram who is a director PJ MER Chandigarh. And he's a very eminent ophthalmologist, as we all know, he's director of PJ Chandigarh. He received the Oscar of Pediatric Ophthalmology 
at the World Congress of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus in Barcelona. He assumed the office of director at PJ Amir in March 2017, and he was conferred with Padma Shri Award by the President of India in January 2019. In, 19, in 2021, actually, he has completed now 42 years in PJ Amir. So we are, you are welcome, sir, and you may please guide us how to uh, about the way forward to improve the eye banking. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, uh, respected uh, Dr. Vikas Mahatme, uh, Padam Shri, Honorable Member of the Rajya Sabha and Chief, Chief Guest of this function. Uh, we have a guest of honor, Dr. Radhika Tandan uh, from Dr. R.P. Center of Ophthalmic Sciences, New Delhi. We have with us uh, Dr. Rakesh uh, Gupta, President and uh, Director of the Cypher, Professor Sonu Goel from the Community Medicine PGI. We have several other uh, faculty such as uh, I can see uh, Dr. Ramesh from Ludhiana who has done excellent work in the field of eye banking as well as actual trans corneal transplantation. We have Dr. Jagdeep, uh, already he has uh, shown how well uh, Haryana has done for the last few years. We also have uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Karamjit Singh, uh, who is uh, from uh, Medical College Amritsar, and uh, he is also doing an uh, excellent job. We have uh, Dr. Ashok Sharma. Uh, who is a pure corneal surgeon and doing excellent job in the field. Uh, Dr. Uh, Rohit Gupta, in the private sector, they are also doing a lot of eye banking. And uh, Dr. Amit Gupta, of course, uh, he is doing a very advanced surgery and uh, corneal transplantation and a uh, lot of eye banking. Uh, I think in this uh, meeting, uh, we have a uh, professor, uh, Dr. Vikas Mahatme, who is an inspiration for us and, and has done excellent job. I think a lot of uh, eye, bank, eye banks were set up by him uh, at a lot of places. And uh, he can definitely help us as uh, Dr. Radhika Tandon also mentioned. And uh, we also have a lot of inspiration from uh, Dr. Radhika Tandon. So, uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Rakesh uh, Gupta and Dr. Sonu Goel for organizing this uh, uh, webinar celebrating eye donation fortnight, activating the eye banking post COVID. I think there were a lot of uh, 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 retardation or there is there, there was a lot of problem due to COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, yeah, last year uh, it was much more, but now we are regaining uh, our uh, eye banking as well as uh, uh, actual donation. So the uh, in short, I can say because uh, there will be detail uh, after inauguration, uh, there will be a lot of discussion. I can say that our aim of this fortnight is to increase the awareness of the eye donation, uh, that uh, we should place for eye donation. And the aim of this uh, awareness is that uh, at the same time, we should also increase the actual donation. And uh, that actual donation, uh, even people don't know that how much, uh, uh, how, how many hours we can, uh, after we can take the, inoculate the eye such as uh, six to eight hours or uh, like that. So we uh, give all this uh, uh, education to the, in the aware awareness. And uh, another uh, good point uh, already said by Dr. Radhika that uh, there should not be any obstacle in the registration. Once I think a uh, person or the iBank uh, where we have to develop the new iBank uh, develop, uh, have all the facilities I, and uh, all the prerequisites are fulfilled, I think we should, uh, uh, we should give them a registration. Uh, so uh, I can say that uh, uh, detail already it will come up. Uh, I will say uh, I thanks uh, Dr. Vikas Mahatme 
uh, for gracing the occasion and uh, chairing this webinar. And uh, at the same time, I am thankful to uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Rakesh Gupta and Dr. Sonu Goel for organizing this, uh, this webinar. And also thanks to Dr. Radhika Tandon who have joined us. And uh, thanks to all the members uh, from, and the faculty from different places. Uh, I conclude uh, retreating my commitment to the cause of uh, with the slogan, Netradan Mahadan, Angdan Mahadan. Uh, because whenever we hold any of the meeting in PGI or uh, in the neighboring state, then we always uh, have organ donation along with eye donation. So uh, because uh, we at PGI, I think uh, our even cadaveric donation, uh, we are uh, we have uh, one of the best in the country. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for your uh, advice. And uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, under your leadership, so PJ actually is already doing wonders. And in the field of uh, eye donation and organ donation also, it will do well. Uh, thank you, sir. So now it is my proud privilege to welcome Dr. Uh, Mahatme. He is a Padma Shri awarded eye surgeon of international repute. He is a firm believer of uh, Mahatma Gandhi's ideology of democracy, peace and truth. Dr. Mahatme has been the has been leading the team of 150 plus through his several hospitals. He has been the founder medical director of Mahatme Eye Bank Eye Hospital, Nagpur, which is a recognized postgraduate teaching institute run by SSMM. He has been the founder medical direct, uh, director of the Mahatme Eye Bank Eye Hospital, Nagpur, which is a recognized postgraduate teaching institute. Uh, uh, by the uh, SMMI uh, Welfare Charitable Trust. So I think this is repeated. The trust that was started by him in a small room in 1986 now treats nearly 65% patients free of cost. And so far, the hospital has performed over 1,80,000 surgeries. And actually, he himself has performed more than 1 lakh surgeries till date. And he was the first to start an eye bank in Vidarbha and establish the eye donation movement there. His contribution to the community eye care uh, as a social worker, as a philanthropist, brought him the third highest uh, civilian award, Padmashiri, at the hands of Honorable President of India in 2010. He has been a teacher for postgraduate student in ophthalmology and the uh, International Council of Ophthalmology recognizes uh, him as a faculty. He is associated with the NPCB member AAO, American Academy of Ophthalmology, and uh, All India Ophthalmological Society, Delhi Ophthalmological Society, and many more societies. He is ex president Geriatric Society of India. He works with many international NGOs like Sight Savers, Help Age India. He has developed a pigment for corneal tattooing. He has developed his own uh, woodcutter nucleus tracking technique for FICO emulsification. And uh, rectal mucous membrane graft for dry, uh, dry eye syndrome has been his exclusive and uh, pioneering contribution. Uh, so uh, we welcome you, Dr. Mahatme. So please guide us uh, on this issue. Thank you, Dr. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a... Uh, Great privilege to be associated with you all people and share my thoughts with you all. On the occasion of iBank I donation fortnight uh, and post COVID, how can we increase the I donation with that challenge we are get, uh, uh, getting together. Basically what we want is that, that every corneal surgeon should not think about whether he will get the cornea or not. He should be able to perform his duties and whatever he feels surgical uh, work he has to do. He should concentrate more on that. And we will organize on this way that cornea will be surplus for every corneal surgeon. So it is a nice initiative. I shall uh, like to thank uh, Dr. Rakesh Gupta. It's, uh, it was uh, good to hear Professor Jagatram, who is director as well as Padmashri Awardee. 
and uh, then radhika tendon also she has shared her views uh, very important and practical uh, i heard uh, dr jagdeep as well as rana singh and uh, i think i shall also like to share my views because as already been told by dr rajesh gupta i started i bank in 1986 in nagpur but i still feel that uh, the the challenge has not been resolved to that extent though nearly 35 years have elapsed so we have to still work on it so uh, it, i am also partly responsible for that i don't say that but collectively we can go ahead and uh, definitely i donation will increase what will what has happened even the data which was shown by dr jaydeep showed that the i donation has reduced in numbers because of covid what thing which should be done at least now is that whosoever whenever death is there we should do post death uh, the <laughs> rt pcr of every person so that what will happen nowadays there is a gray area whether the patient or the deceased was suffering from covid or not even if there is some doubt we say we will not take the x so let us have the facility of testing rt pcr after every death which is not due to covid or suspicious of covid so that what will happen at least few percent of people who will who want to donate is will be able to donate because that question mark will be solved that is my feeling and how it can be implemented that we will have to work it out second is i told you that we are doing very well but still we are unorganized as far as i banks are concerned what do you, what i mean by unorganized at all what is my proposition is that we should have apex i bank in every and then we should have a district i bank in every district and then i donation centers whenever at every taluka level so that it becomes a structured i bank today we are missing that unless and until we have a structure i feel we will we are working hard but the results and outcome is not as expected and that's why if it is in a structured format that will be better of course ngo participation is very important and let us not call it as public private it is ngo because public ngo participation because if you say private with i bank then people have a doubt in mind because what why private people should be there something like that so it is better to say public and the ngo trust so what is important is the structured way of i banking and if more number of i banks come that is okay but we should have one apex in every state then one district and i donation centers at taluka level and then other i banks if they want they will be able to contribute also and this will be continuous training the apex i banks will, will give continuous training to paramedics so that they will be able to retrieve corn sometimes i feel we should remove eyeballs completely because they can be used for research purpose because only corneal removal may not be that much uh beneficial as far as research is concerned so but it's a uh, we have to decide what to do but we should have a structured format for the i banking second is as you have a good thing that you have one phone number we have in maharashtra one phone number 1853 but it start working unfortunately and uh, the thing is that this is uh, this health is a straight subject so of course the rules and regulations are there from the central government but we, uh, the the legal format is from say, central government and uh, as uh, dr rana uh, as dr uh, radhika told that we should have some changes in the rule which are applicable to cornea only that is very essential 
and uh, that way we should have some changes in the rules and if there are needed uh, the rules uh, if you give me the things we where the changes are needed i shall pursue it to the government also so uh, it's better if it comes through director or uh, your institute that is far better because it becomes more easy uh, that was about phone number then what i wanted to that rural area is not covered under i donation that is a great challenge as far as our state is concerned haryana and punjab will have the same thing because they also want to donate guys but the collection from the rural area if you see is not as much as from the uh, district level or the uh, uh, district level they that is the difference because we are not able to reach it is not that the people do not want to do we are not able to reach to them that is where so that is the area where we can work more and we can get increase the i donation and last time also i told that uh, hospital corneal retrieval program is the only way to have a good quality of i donation and that should be promoted because in hospital corneal retrieval program the cause of death is known the blood sample can be taken up easily the the sudden deaths are there and they say there the i donation uh, if it happens the cornea will be of good quality so how can we stress this hcrp program hospital corneal retrieval that we will have to decide and take up as the first important thing which we have to promote of course through this we want that i donation should increase uh, by general awareness and last time also told i uh, shared uh, in chandigarh with professor jagatram and other people that let us have some certain rule like if hospital late is there the relatives should sign that we are not willing to donate any part or donate i of this <coughs> our disease uh, nearest ki tar ki so what will happen they will think of whether we should donate or not and they will decide that i do not want to donate and then only they will sign and then they will get the death certificate so they have to think twice before signing that otherwise many times what happens i have seen that people will say oh i forgot that time i wanted to donate but i forgot at that time and it was a, because they are in grief so can this be in a rule format of course many of the things which i have suggested really are my responsibility also i do not shy away from that shy away from that so if you give me some papers or uh, some proposition i shall follow it with the central government and uh, we will together we can increase the i donation and gradually it should be in a such a way that we need not bother too much about getting cornea which still we have to work on it especially the clinical surgeons means clinical people also so let us as uh, now onwards we take this movement forward and i shall like to congratulate uh, uh, dr rakesh gupta for organizing such a wonderful seminar on this topic and uh, i hope definitely this will increase the i donation in near future because today there is a crunch of getting cornea and that will be solved uh, i am very much thankful to all other members Uh, who are participating many of them i shall not be able to see but i am very much thankful to them thank you thanks a lot so thank you dr mahatme and a very good piece of advice that we should uh, do rt pcr of all the death cases and those who are non covid at least uh, we can uh, motivate the families to donate eyes and we should have an apex eye bank in all the states and we are actually trying to get an apex uh, i bank in punjab and uh, there should be i donation centers in all the districts and preferably at uh, uh, tehsil level as well and uh, as you said that i bank as a whole can be retrieved so these can be used uh, for research purpose 
and uh, there should be a district uh, there should be a state level toll free number so that should uh, that is also a good uh, suggestion and uh, as uh, suggested that by dr radhika there should be some changes in the rules for thota and uh, rural areas uh, uh, we need to motivate people in the rural areas for more uh, collection of the ibals and hcrp definitely it has to be activated so thank you uh, sir and uh, before we have a uh, snapshot of all who are present so i'll request dr sonu goel to give his public health point of view regarding i donation uh, may i ask all to please switch on the videos all are requested to switch on yeah. and dr sonu goel so yeah, he is the you. yeah yeah yes dr sonu goel thank you dr akesh i think uh, it's wonderful to be a part of community uh, for which i have very little knowledge uh, i am from public health point uh, like public health background but over a period of time when i i had been associated with dr rakesh in cipher so i have learned something about uh, i and it's really nice to see a very uh, good bunch of people who are uh, really um, motivating and uh, i have seen presentations from haryana uh, punjab uh, chandigarh so it's really motivating to see i think all individuals working very hard for uh, this i bank so i'll not give uh, uh, like i have few couple of suggestion from the public health point of view to increase i donation as uh, uh, sir uh, dr vikas mahatme has said that in rural area we have very little uh, i donation uh, actually which is coming from there yeah. so like community medicine department or public health department are present uh, present in almost each and every block uh, in our uh, in uh, and these blocks are attached with the medical colleges so that is uh, i think uh, one point which can be taken here is that they can be involved in the coordination uh, all community medicine department from uh, like uh, there are 650 medical colleges if they are involved along with the i department so we can increase uh, uh, i donation from uh, the rural area because they can they can help in increasing the ic education activities in the areas and i think we can have many much more i donation from the rural area so i think this is one suggestion uh, the second suggestion is uh, uh, i think we have we must have many models which uh, uh, might be working very well and as dr vikas has said about uh, um, about uh, uh, like the center which he has been leading and uh, i think lot many surgeries has been done so i think these models can be showcased to uh, such models which might exist in some of the other part of the country might uh, might be showcased to see that this is the this is the system uh, where uh, the i donation has been working and all the management information system uh, uh, is working very nice so these system should be highlighted and maybe awarded at some other forums so i think these are just couple of suggestion from the public health point of view i want to uh, make it here and i really want to thank dr rakesh for involving me in uh, this very important uh, webinar and somebody rightly said that this is one of the webinar which is unique in the sense that we have two uh, luminaries in form of uh, padm shri which is present here i think uh, it's really uh, nice to be uh, in this in this function thank you so thank you dr sonu and uh, your suggestions uh, will add to the uh, recommendations which will emerge after this uh, panel discussion so i will now request all to please switch on their videos and we'll have a snapshot so uh, dr mehendra can you have the snapshots please those who are not switched on the video may please uh, switch on please so so that all are covered yeah dr mehendra uh, yes sir i am taking this screen yeah, yeah. so is it done yes sir yes sir so thank you and uh, now we'll uh, proceed to the panel discussion so so the inaugural session is over so because dr vikas uh, mahatme yeah. he had to attend another meeting so sir uh, yeah
But if you have time, you can just continue. Otherwise, uh, you will leave. No, no. I want to leave. I actually three thirty, but it's okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Sir. I got good. Uh, thank you for everything. Thank you. Uh, th thanks. Thanks, sir. So now, uh, Dr. Sonu Goel and uh, me, we will be moderating the panel discussion. So we have with us uh, Dr. Shakeen Singh, Dr. Karamjit Singh, Dr. Ashok Sharma, Dr. Amit Gupta, Dr. Ramesh, and uh, Dr. Rohit. They are all our Konya heroes. They were awarded Konya Hero Awards in, uh, last year uh, during the I Donation Fortnight. So, uh, Dr. Sonu, so are you with us? Uh, yes, Dr. Akesh, I'm Yeah, I'm very much here. So, uh, the challenge is uh, currently being faced by us. So I may just, uh, before we start with the panel discussion, I may just point out to you that we have an inadequate uh, amount of funds being allotted to, to NPCB out of the funds allotted under NCD pool. Because now we don't have dedicated funds uh, in NPCB. We have, we have to extract it from the NCD pool. So some of the SPOs who are not very active, they may lose on this amount. So I uh, will request uh, Dr. Mahatme to please do something about it. And uh, we should, uh, as earlier, we should have dedicated funds under NPCB. So IBank's credit plus centers, they are not getting timely reimbursement for procurement of the tissue and surgery is performed under NPCB. This is a very common problem, especially uh, with the NGO IBanks. So efforts at increasing collection from government medical college hospitals and district hospitals, they are uh, till date, it has not been very successful, especially in Punjab, I can say about Punjab. So, but I think uh, in Haryana, the situation is better. The voluntary donations from the community were often not fruitful. And in fact, many corneas they retrieved from such sources were actually not transplanted due to their poor quality, thus underscoring the need for a hospital cornea retrieval program as uh, Dr. Mahatme has also suggested us that uh, it needs to be activated. The eye banks in government medical college hospitals, they are not as active as desired, especially since uh, March 2020 because of the COVID pandemic, as very few corneas are being procured and uh, implanted in absence of the dedicated uh, trained corneal surgeons. So we have problems in uh, government sector and uh, there are different problems um, with the uh, private surgeons so I think we can discuss uh, uh, all the participants in the panel discussion. So they'll uh, let us know their problems and what innovations they have made uh, on their own to activate the iBanking, especially post-COVID. Post so, uh, so Dr. Sonu, can you introduce uh, Dr. Shok Sharma? So, um, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rakesh. Uh, so, it's my proud privilege to introduce Dr. Ashok Sharma, who is Director, Cornea Center of Chandigarh and has more than 30 years of experience in eye banking and corneal transplant surgery. And uh, he, was, uh, he was instrumental in uh, establishing eye bank society of Chandigarh and was facilitated by Doon Society and given state honor by Mr. P.K. Dhumal, then Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh for his outstanding contribution in the field of eye donation and corneal transplant surgery. He has been awarded uh, the Achievement Award by American Academy of Ophthalmology and developed uh, major expertise in corneal grafting in children. So received Best Poster Awarded by American Academy of Ophthalmology at Chicago, US for his work on corneal transplant in children. And he has delivered guest lectures on various topics, including corneal drafting in children in Middle East and African Society of Ophthalmology Conference at Bahrain. And besides it, I think uh, uh, he has uh, he has been uh, Dr. As Dr. Jagatram has uh, pointed out that he has been doing a lot of work in uh, Chandigarh, and uh, I think he has done many many corneal transplant surgery in uh, his clinic. So welcome, uh, Dr. Ashok. Uh, to this panel discussion. So, uh, Dr. Ashok, we can uh, can we hear from you? And uh, after that, I'll introduce Dr. Shikhen Singh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the 
invitation and uh, giving me opportunity to share my experience as uh, in the beginning only i told that uh, this uh, meeting is unique that uh, we have uh, uh, like uh, uh, two guests who are padam shri and it uh, uh, is very rare to have that kind of meeting and then we had uh, uh, like uh, uh, inputs from both professor uh, jagatram and uh, dr vikas mahatme and 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 we were also enlightened by professor radhika from rpc uh, on various issues uh, in this uh, uh, meeting uh, probably i am the only person who has uh, uh, experience of both the government setup as well as private setup and uh, i have been instrumental in uh, i banking from the very beginning uh, as early as 1986 85 and in pgi i was the one who uh, like uh, uh, was instrumental in forming the ibank society and increasing the number of uh, donations from uh, less than 10 to 250 and uh, uh, i left pgi in 2002 and after that i am in private practice so i have i have uh, like idea of uh, both the sides of the coin uh, uh, and i will share some of my experiences papa ki no, meeting ho gayi hai highlighted by Uh, uh uh dr radhika and uh, dr vigas mathme uh, during the covid uh, uh, pandemic uh, i banking activities were completely shut down and uh, uh, i think we should be really thankful to the uh, office bearers of uh, i bank association of india and uh, all india ophthalmological society uh, office bearers who made guidelines and uh, uh, also uh, uh, gave us lot of uh, 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 guidance to initiate the i banking again it was in fact the rebirth of i banking immediately after pandemic and among others professor radhika tandon played a significant role uh, um, in my experience and i think in others experience also like optical penetrating grafts or endothelial keratoplasty was completely stopped because we didn't get any fresh corneas uh, we uh, as corneal surgeons had to rely on glycerin preserved donor corneas for emergency like if we have a perforated ulcer uh, to perform therapeutic graft or lamellar graft or dlk uh, and in emergencies we were managing uh, corneal melts impending perforation actual perforation with these issues and now we also used some of the alternate uh, tissues like uh, preserved sclera Uh, amniotic membrane uh, uh, tissue, then uh, tenon's capsule, conjunctival flaps to treat uh, uh, corneal ulceration and corneal melts and corneal perforations, and also we have uh, some assistance from cyanoacrylate tissue adhesives. Uh, these are the adhesives which can seal the perforation if the perforation is very small. Uh, we also try to uh, uh, like uh, put few more sutures in at least in my practice. so that there is no wound leak and patient uh, uh, need not come uh, for follow up in at a very short interval uh, and uh, we can uh, like uh, avoid the resuturing uh, kind of things uh, we uh, so that was how we managed these patients uh, uh, during our uh, covid time now coming to uh, some of the issues which were uh, faced by us in uh, i banking uh, uh, otherwise also or during uh, the covid uh, we have universal uh, like shortage of donor cornea and that is worldwide it it's it's well exact, expected and uh, like uh, it is more in the uh, developing world uh, it is uh, uh, well known and there are so many studies which have been done and on the prevalence of corneal blindness and it has been seen that the blindness is the corneal blindness is more in the north as compared to the south and other parts uh, but at the same time the procurement of the donor corneas is also less in the north as compared to the south and other parts so we need to enhance the uh, uh, procurement of the donor nails but at the same time i would like to highlight that it's not only the numbers that we need we also need the quality eye banking quality eye banking means that the endothelial cell count should be on a higher side because we have to like perform new procedures these days like uh, uh, desmer stripping endothelial keratoplasties or dmac or pediatric corneal transplants or regrafts uh, where the surgeries are complex you have to manage uh, uh, inside the eye uh, uh, vitreous also and sometimes lens also and sometimes you have to do secondary eye wells so all these things are required uh, and then you have one eyed patients also so we need uh, donor eyes with higher cell counts so for that quality eye banking uh, should be the focus 
and to uh, achieve this focus i would like to uh, mention that adoption of hospital cornea retrieval program is a must and uh, you may be surprised to know that like uh, apart from rpc or like uh, maybe hospitals in delhi uh, but uh, uh, not to delhi uh, except for pgi i don't think there is any other hospital which has a, a effective hospital cornea retrieval program and quality donor eyes can only be achieved through hospital cornea uh, retrieval program because otherwise we get donor eyes from very aged patients or uh, with other problems where we cannot use these eyes for optical purposes so this is one thing and the biggest problem we have experience of uh, uh, like uh, using uh, a hospital cornea retrieval program in practice also but then there is no uh, uh, like direction from the government so that is the reason the private hospitals or the private eye banks are not uh, like encouraged by the uh, uh, multi specialty hospitals to come and to uh, uh, like uh, uh, work under the hospital cornea retrieval program so if there is a direction from the government uh, that the private hospitals or ngos can also go for it then it would be a better thing uh, another issue is of uh, uh, delaying uh, donations from the medical legal cases we are all aware that it is the accidental deaths or the medical legal uh, cases which are the best suited for the corneal transplants uh, dr shok are you with us sir so i think we have lost contact with him so uh so i think uh, i like to call dr shakeen singh so doc dr shakeen are you with us so dr shakeen singh he is the problem is because uh, even if we have i think dr shok is back yeah Doctor Shok, your internet connection is very unstable. So you can join again, but uh, right now I am calling uh, Doctor Shikin Singh. So Doctor Shikin Singh, he is director, cornea center, uh, Chandigarh. Hello. Hello. Uh, Doctor Shok, yeah, your uh, your internet connection is very dicey. I think it's unstable. We have again lost. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You can continue. so please uh, please try to be brief another minute yeah yeah yes yes dr shok please continue yeah yeah just just a minute so uh, there should be orders from the government so that uh, the uh, police can permit the donations from these uh, uh, bodies and uh, uh, doctors uh, who are to perform the autopsies can give the permission so that the valuable time is not lost otherwise these eyes they become like uh, uh, they cannot be used there is another uh, 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 suggestion like if whatever like uh, uh, i do not like forms we are filling and cards cards we are making instead of that we can have something on the something on the uh, driving license or aadhar card that would be more uh, useful because if that is there then the relatives they cannot say no uh then we have am i audible dr rakesh sir you are audible you are audible. i am audible yes yes you are audible sir you are audible and uh, and that that will make lot of difference then the then the next of kin cannot say no to the donation because otherwise it becomes difficult at times uh, they 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 say no but if the if the if the donor has wished it that i am going to donate it then they cannot say no the other issue is of medical ethics i am for it that the medical ethics should be strictly like uh, 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 sometimes what happens is that uh, the the people are uh, disclosing the identity of the donors to the recipients and that makes uh, sometimes a lot of problems i was in pgi and at that time somebody has donated the eyes to another family and i don't know from where they came to know we never disclosed in, uh, the identity but that uh, mother of that donor was after us that i want to meet that person and i want to see my son and this this kind of problem there is 
and another issue is that the charitable ibex they uh, sometimes do not give donor corneas to the corneal surgeons who are in practice even if the surgeon is willing to give undertaking that he is going to use it for charity i don't know why because i have faced this problem when i left in 2002 i went to the famous dolka in gujarat to uh, support me for the donor rice and they clearly said no we have a policy that we cannot give to you because you are in practice a reimbursement of uh, the corneal transplant charges to the corneal surgeons are like very less uh, through some of the government uh, portals and agencies it is something like 5000 with which we cannot even manage to pay the uh, processing charges so this needs to be taken care of another issue to my mind which is very important for our young cornea colleagues who are aspiring to be corneal surgeons is that whenever they have to go for the registration of the corneal center or the eye bank they need a fellowship certificate and the problem is that there is like if you leave aside or leave aside aims there is no other government medical college in ut chandigarh punjab haryana jnk hp rajasthan who is giving this degree corneal fellowship is not given by any of these medical colleges then i don't know from where the person has to procure this degree and to present it. another issue is that suppose something happens that somebody like suppose if if somebody has even taken the fellowship a fellowship from a hospital or a private hospital now if there is a medical legal case i don't know this this, this fellowship is not going to protect him in the court of law that is another issue so i think these issues should be taken into account to make the eye banking and corneal transplant services safe to the patients as well as to the corneal sir thank you dr rakesh i would like to congratulate you for excellent meeting uh, thank you dr ashok so dr sonu you may like to comment upon dr ashok sharma's uh, address dr sonu are you with us ah uh, yes yes dr rakesh i am with you uh -huh. so uh, should we uh, should we ask dr Ah, okay. Yes, yes. So, Dr. Shikin Singh is with us. So, I request all to please uh, restrict yourself to three or four minutes. So, Dr. Ashok Sharma has actually very, uh, very comprehensively uh, given us all the issues which are important, and we'll uh, add to the recommendations. So, now I request Dr. Uh, Shikin Singh to just tell us uh, his viewpoint. and uh, he is director cornea center uh, cornea center and uh, has more than 30 years of experience in uh, eye banking and cornea transplant surgery he is hod of ophthalmology and dean academics sdr the university of health sciences amritsar and uh, dr shikin singh is with us since 2015 uh, in this initiative cbbs uh, initiative so dr shikin singh thank you dr rakesh yeah am i audible sir yes you are audible so i'm really sorry i joined late because of some my appointment we were in a hypercase committee meeting of the session today yeah yeah thank you so i was a bit late to join and uh, as the time restricted it's definitely i would say it's a very valuable uh, seminar which uh, dr kesh has conducted and always he would put in something very good for the eye donation and eye procurement and eye donation uh, eye transplant process so you contribute a lot towards cornea blindness prevention and cure program so sir i congratulate you under the dynamic leadership of dr radhika tanan who is always a guiding force to us in punjab so coming down to my you know suggestions uh, i i slightly i believe a bit different view you see everybody is talking of eye donation my concern is eye donated would only be used by the cornea surgeon so the first thing we must think of the safety of the surgeon number one wherever he is working we should take its uh, you know all interest into consideration and to let him work free of all all, all adversaries so second thing is the procurement that i would believe is a better if a government can own at least in my state at a district headquarter so anybody from a local center can Deliver that tissue to our district headquarters, maybe at any of the civil hospital. 
which can then be contributed to any cornea surgeon sitting anywhere in that state or if it's surplus, can be sent to somewhere else. That way we would have a good quality of tissue and would have an even distribution of the tissue and safety of the surgeon too. The second issue which I believe is as Dr. Ashok has already mentioned about the reimbursement of the cornea transplant surgery that should be enhanced because few of our centers in Punjab, they are doing free of cost and you incur a lot of, lot of uh, you know, resources on that. If government can in, uh, enhance their reimbursement, that definitely would uh, encourage more surgeons to come forward for transplantation. Third thing is about the corner transplant surgeon itself. As Dr. Ashok has already rightfully mentioned, we have no fellowship program in Punjab or nearby. So instead of uh, getting more cornea, we should have pushing more corneal surgeons. So all those corneal surgeons who has a decent surgery uh, you know, experience, they should be deputed to local centers like Jindra, Jindra Hospital, Governor Medical College, Patiala, Amritsar, and Preet Kaur, a uh, G, uh, 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 what do you call this, uh, the, uh, PGI, we can depute them for short trainings and we push in more corneal surgeons at the district headquarter level and they would put their own bit and the corneal transplant can be enhanced. You see, this is a disease of a compromised corneal uh, economic status people. Social economic status is compromised. So most of them they are working with the hands, working in the fields, or working with the tools. So this, if it's uh, available at their doorstep, would be easy to be delivered to more people. So these are a few of my suggestions and I would definitely congratulate Dr. Rakesh for putting these efforts and putting us all together to make us aware that cornea blindness is a big issue which we can only manage with our own efforts and time to time he is making us sensitize about this cause. Thank you Dr. Rakesh. So thank you, Dr. Shikin. And uh, you have a very valid suggestion that uh, reimbursement has to be increased. So as we have seen that uh, Dr. Jagdeep Singh has told us that it is already 15,000 in uh, Haryana, 7,500 from government's own kitty. So that is a very good initiative of uh, Haryana government. And I think that can be uh, followed by all other governments. And another uh, suggestion was that uh, since we don't have fellowship of uh, uh, in cornea, so it is better that we depute our general ophthalmologists who are having good skills in uh, cataract surgery uh, to uh, to the medical colleges or uh, or PGI for short duration, and that they can be uh, they can be trained for cornea surgery. So thank you, Dr. Shiki. and now I request Dr. Amit Gupta. So. Dr. Sonu, can you introduce him or should I do it? Yes, yes. Either way, sir. Either way. Achha, uh, Dr. Mehendra, can you project the slide? Or I'll introduce her. Okay. Yes, yes. So, okay. Professor Amit Gupta, uh, he's, uh, he's doing cornea, cataract and refractive surgery uh, in advanced eye center, PJ Chandigarh. His areas of interest are femtosecond laser applications, Lacy, keratoplasty, intax, and uh, cataract. So, Dr. Amit, uh, we'd like to hear the viewpoint from the government uh, eye banks. So, what will be your suggestions how we can improve post COVID? Uh, um, thank you, Dr. Rakesh. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Um, you know, my impression was that we'll discuss the challenges faced during the COVID epidemic and maybe. Uh, carry forward um, any discussion. A couple of points that um, one point which was raised was that the financial support and uh, I think uh, Dr. Rakesh is also well aware that for the past four years uh, PGI Chandigarh has not been given any support from any quarter. Uh, you know we have the iBank Society which is an NGO and there's almost 40 lakhs due to us and we are trying our best uh, even at the government of India level to get it and anybody who can help us uh, in procuring this uh, will be more than happy. So this is at a uh, rate of uh, 1000 rupees per cornea collected. Uh, we are not getting any payment for any keratoplasty that we do, although we do a huge number of patients who cannot afford it. 
So the major crippling point for PGI has been uh, lack of financial support, uh, unlike maybe the RPC. Uh, regarding the training program, uh, I think uh, again when we had the meeting with the uh, Mrs. Vinnie Mahajan, I think Professor Modupta was the chief advisor at that meeting, and it was decided that for a um, experienced cornea specialist, the period of three months would be enough that they would come to PGI. Uh, from the Punjab government side, only I think one person came, and after that nobody came to PGI. But in case anybody wants to. Uh, train, I'm sure we can uh, uh, carry on from where we left uh, before and then maybe certify a three month training period or something like that. We have got a couple of people from JNK also in the past uh, who have spent some time there and received some kind of a certificate, which is something is better than nothing. We do have an MCH in cornea cataract and refractive, but of course, that is very difficult. And uh, it may be very difficult for a person who's advanced in his career to go back to that. Uh, I would like to share a few slides uh, uh, with the permission of the chair. Uh, Dr. Rakesh, can we share? Uh, yes, sir, you, you can, can do it. You can share. You can share, sir. Uh, yeah. Is my presentation uh, visible? Is, is it visible? It is visible. It is visible. Very briefly, you know, I was looking at this uh, publication, which is impact of the nationwide COVID-19 lockdown on keratoplasty and eye banking. So this was in February 2021. So the average number of coronal transplantation, the, the period of, you know, that major lockdown April to May 2020, was less than two coronal transplants were being done by over almost 80% of the coronal surgeons. So that was how bad the problem was. But we in PGI especially, and I'm sure other college surgeons were getting such severe cases which required either an emergency intervention or the eyes would be lost. Uh, as far as other our figures were concerned, pre-COVID we collected 600 eyes and uh, we were down to about 132 eyes and our coronal transplants also came down to 113 in the, in the post-COVID era. So we were close to 400 uh, pre-COVID. But uh, things are picking up and uh, in fact, in August, uh, from 1st August till date, uh, we have now collected 104 eyes and performed 60 coronal grafts. So we are getting back in action with our uh, measures, but still, what are the challenges faced and what measures have we initiated in PGI? One is the donor screening is being done very stringently as per the guidance which have been issued by the government of India. and. Uh, we are collecting only from those donors which have, are having a COVID negative report, not more than 48 hours before death. And uh, what we do is, uh, the uh, there's a proper donning and doffing. So PPE kit is used. And because there is an eye bank counselor or involved, there's a resident involved, and there is a person who processes the eyes. So <clears throat> three PPE kits are needed. Uh, for uh, every pair of eyes that we collect. And this is given by PGI free, of course, to uh, the eye bag. Uh, residents are trained in how to handle the, the, through the CD ward. Um, they are trained by the uh, PGI specialists how to handle, how to don the, the gowns and not to contaminate. So a nasal swab is collected from each person, each donor, and it is sent to preferably for gene expert and we get the report within an hour and then the sample. Uh, so this is the kind of a COVID uh, sampling, the viral transport media and the swab, which is then received and it is transferred uh, in a cold chain to icebox. And, and we get this report and then we process the eye further. This is the ICMR uh, specimen referral form that is being used. And this is what is then uh, submitted to the virology department. So it's added a lot of paperwork to us also uh, when we are collecting the eyes. Even while processing the eyes, uh, as per the guidelines, all the performers and the papers are exposed to UV lights for 30 minutes um, in the laminar flow hood. And uh, the processing is done. And all the routine samples, the, uh, the viral testing and uh, markers we are doing. So after that screening, the resident doctor uh, on duty assesses the corneas and this is then stored. Uh, the major thing that we achieved was inclusion of the MLC cases. I would specifically like to thank Professor Yogendra Bansal, who's the young dynamic HOD of the forensic medicine. 
and you'll be surprised out of the 74 eyes that we collected during COVID period, uh, out of the 132 eyes we collected, 74 were MLCIs. And before that, we had such a big problem trying to get the MLCIs. But because of our collaboration uh, with the forensic department now, uh, we are, this process has got streamlined. This is the kind of form which is being filled and uh, we have a no objection certificate that we obtained from forensic medicine for retrieval of ice and we go ahead and we take the ice. It has made a very big difference to the quality of ice that we are collecting now. And uh, of course, usage of alternate tissues, we were forced uh, to use a lot of tissues. Uh, this is just the Aeon's uh, graft that we, were, we had to do for common population. Uh, you know, we are doing refractive surgery, which is smile in which a coronal lenticule is extracted. We have used in a lot of patients, the smile lenticule, and they have all done well. Uh, Sinocrit blue, of course, uh, the survey, which was published in the Indian Journal of Ophthalmology showed that almost 75% um, yeah, or, or of perforations were being treated by Sinocrit blue. In very desperate measures, this happened when there was complete lockdown. And this patient came and I uh, used a huge piece of, piece of sclera this patient, once the corneas were available, underwent a successful coronal transplant. And this is a sclera. We can use this. You can see the huge perforation. This is one eye. He was blind in the other eye. So it was so important to try to save this eye. And uh, this patient, you know, now it's been almost a year and he's doing very well. And he's put six vision in that eye. So uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. And I think we have tried our best to do the maximum amount of service for the blind patients that we present to us. Uh, thank you. You are muted. Dr. Rakesh, you are muted. You are not, you are not audible. Okay, okay. Oh, thank you, Dr. Amit. And uh, your suggestions are well taken and that will be included uh, in the in the repre representation we'll give to the Dr. Mahatma, there's lack of financial support for keratoplasty surgeries. As um, the, the issue is, is that the, you have an eye bank society, but you are considered as a government eye bank. So that is an issue. I think that should be sorted out between uh, Director Health Services, UT, and uh, between the PGI. And then you said about the three months training in PGI. That is, an, uh, that is a good idea. And uh, earlier, we used, the NPCB used to sponsor candidates for such trainings, even in PGI. I don't know it is happening now or not. And the, the good thing uh, you have told about the medical legal cases, you have been able to retrieve 74 eyeballs uh, or 75, uh, uh, 74 eyeballs with the help of the police and with the help of the HOD forensic. That is a very good thing. I think we all need to learn from it. So thank you, Dr. Amit. And uh, now I'll request uh, Dr. Ramesh uh, to please uh, uh, let us know about his viewpoint. Uh, he is, I think, the most well-known uh, uh, eye surgeon for keratoplasty surgeries in Punjab. Dr. And, uh, yes. Yeah, yes, you, yes. Uh, if you give me a minute. Yes, yes, sure, sure. Uh, can I share one patient who is a bilateral blind? Okay. Sitting, sitting in front of me, but okay. a good quality of tissue, we uh -huh. can definitely, uh, you know, do a good surgery and can get a good results. If you okay. say, I, if you permit me, I can share the photo on this state lab itself. Uh, you can share the photograph, sure. Just, just hold on. Okay. Just a second. Okay. I'm going to be there. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. Though it is not very, the, uh, the photograph is not very large, but still we can make out, still we can make out the excellent surgery you have been able to do. And that's the excellent tissue which has given this bilateral blind person to move independently today. That is good. So this, this, is your, this is your efforts, your promotion. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Dr. Shkin, for sharing the photograph. And now I'll request Dr. Ramesh, uh, who is Medical Director, Punarjot Eye Bank, Ludhiana, uh, Advanced Corneal Transplantation uh, Center with NABH accreditation. He's, uh, he's done a pioneering work in eye banking at grassroots level in Punjab since 1991. 
So we welcome you, Dr. Ramesh. Please let us know your viewpoint and your suggestions. Dr. Ramesh, are you with us? He's mute. Dr. Ramesh, mute. I think you are muted. Yeah. It's now. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. You are audible. You are audible, yeah. So uh, I enjoyed the whole session and I, I always work as a humble. So in the future, whatsoever responsibility given to me as any duty, I will avoid that and we work for the corner. So I have no more what to say. Only congratulate you and continue the same things. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh. And you are doing a wonderful work in Punjab and we are thankful to you. So now I'll request Dr. Karamjit Singh. So he has done MS in 1999. He is professor of ophthalmology in the Regional Institute of Ophthalmology, GMC Amisa. And he's performing cornea surgery since 2003 and is associated with us since 2015 in the cornea and the blindness backlog free initiative. So Dr. Karamjit, please uh, let us know about your suggestions. Thank you, Dr. Kesh. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to tell the situation of uh, eye banking in Punjab because uh, Dr. Niti has not joined. Uh, in Punjab, uh, we have uh, three eye banks in government sector, two eye banks in uh, private medical colleges at Ludhiana and uh, three eye banks in private sector. So total eight eye banks are there in Punjab. And we have 22 corneal transplant centers, which are affiliated to various uh, eye banks uh, outside, the, most mostly outside state as well as uh, in uh, in our state of Punjab. And we have only four eye donation centers in Punjab till now. So regarding the various issues faced by uh, government medical colleges, I would like to. Uh, highlight few of the issues. First of all, the eye bank of Amritsar uh, uh, is one of the oldest eye bank established in 1983. And uh, uh, by the eminent surgeons of that time, Dr. Silal, Dr. Daljeet Singh, Dr. Sansar Singh Sangha, and a uh, few more. Uh, since then, it is working. We are registered with under HOTA in 2007. And we are performing, we were performing average 250 uh, uh, penetrating and other keratoplasty procedures till 19 uh, till two, 2019 and we are also giving training uh, for a retrieval of eyes to ophthalmologists general medical practitioners ophthalmic officers optometrists staff nurses for retrieval of corneas and after that transport uh, transport of uh, to the nearest eye bank so uh, I would like to uh, highlight that uh, our eye bank is a eye bank training center. As Dr. Ashok and uh, Dr. Amit uh, highlighted that uh, uh, training center should be there. Our uh, eye bank is a registered eye bank training center with the Ministry of Health. But till date, nobody came for to receive the training of three months. Uh, in government as well as in private sector. The challenges uh, faced by the government eye banks, especially the government medical college, Patiala, Amritsar and Freedkot, actually there is a lack of adequate funding by the state government to run the activities of eye banking. Previously, we were receiving funding from a national program for control of blindness and visual impairment till the period of Dr. Kesh when um, uh, he was deputy director and in charge of NPCB program. But now these days uh, we are not receiving any uh, financial aid from uh, Ministry of Health or uh, from our state government. And also uh, we have um, inadequate trained manpower uh, like uh, the eye bank technicians. Uh, so we have only one eye bank counselor in government medical college Amritsar. So one thing I would like to highlight that eye bank counselor should be there in each and every eye bank 
in medical colleges and at district level so dr kesh this is one 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 uh, point that i would like to highlight that i uh, counselors the grief counselors i bank counselors or i donation counselors should be there at district level to motivate the general public coming to the district hospitals for i donation then one thing that i would like to highlight that in government medical colleges of punjab or in india the i bank should be treated as a separate unit it should be treated as a separate unit with a separate in charge of i bank separate faculty member in charge of i bank to run the i bank activity smoothly and one thing more i would like to highlight that we started uh, hospital cornea retrieval program way back in 2016 and there was substantial increase in our i donations from our hospital only so we started in 2016 but in uh, in the covid era because uh, the amritsar medical college is uh, level 3 uh, care hospital in the covid so uh, this this now this hospital cornea retrieval program is not functional but we will starting the hospital cornea retrieval uh, program soon in our medical college rather only today only we have meeting with our principal and medical student to start this program again so we received uh, 136 eyes in 2019 from our hospital cornea retrieval program only so i would like to highlight that uh, hospital cornea retrieval program should be started in every medical college whether in government sector or in private sector as well as the bigger districts like district uh, ludhiana jalandhar uh, patiala amritsar bathinda like that where now the government has placed three or four ophthalmologist in each district hospital so i would like to say that uh, in all 23 districts of punjab now there are two or three ophthalmologist in each and every district so i bank should be opened at district level as uh, our uh, today's chief guest um, the member ajay sabha dr vikas mahatme uh, highlighted that i bank should be opened at each district level and also there is a need of apex i bank need of apex i bank is there i think government should um, open apex i bank in punjab also whether in medical college or even in outside medical college so these are the few points the next is uh, uh, in 2016 we started a, a program of prevention of corneal injuries prevention of corneal injuries with the few ngos and uh, Uh, with the help of uh, agriculture department of uh, uh, khalsa college amritsar so we also uh, we motivated various agriculture workers to wear uh, protective goggles uh, and we also uh, motivate some industrial work workers in, in the amritsar to wear uh, goggles protective glasses so like that uh, we should also uh, motivate the ngos and the other people for prevention of the corneal injuries so that we receive less number of patients with corneal injury especially um, in this border belt of punjab we are receiving patients with corneal injuries from the agriculture sector similarly in other districts like in district ludhiana or in district uh, jalandhar uh, and in bathinda where the industry industrial units are more so they receive uh, corneal injuries from the industrial areas so there we should encourage the ngos to work there for prevention of corneal injuries so these are the few points that i would like to highlight uh, the most important is that uh, every district hospital should have i bank and uh, that should be registered with appropriate authority with adequate staff and adequate facilities because we are we are uh, we are now having having um, more number of ophthalmologist at district level so hospital cornea retrieval program should be encouraged rather we have seen 
very good results in uh, 2018 19 so this is these are the few points that i would like to highlight uh, oh thank you dr karanbit for sharing your experience and your suggestions so i think uh, uh, there should be a more coordinated efforts with the dr neeti and dr reeth she is now director nhm so you can please coordinate with them and i think there is some discrepancy in the number of edcs maybe four are uh, uh, active maybe others are dormant but there are i think more number of uh, edcs and uh, it is good that uh, government medical college amritsar it is doing uh, cornea surgery since 1983 and uh, with the you at the helm of a phase i i'm hopeful that uh, it will uh, regain that glory so financial aid as you said is not there from npcb so it is a, a local issue i think it can be sorted out and uh, definitely the i bank manpower especially the counselors they are not there so it has to be taken we will we will also take up with the mbnhm so you can also take up the issue whenever there is a meeting and uh, hcrp definitely as uh, dr mathme also said that it has to be activated and uh, the, another good suggestion is we need to do prevention of eye surgeries so that we have lesser number of uh, uh, patients for keratoplasty so thank you dr karamjit and now we have with us dr rohit gupta so he is uh, he is in private sector and uh, he is a director of the tri city eye hospital in uh, in uh, mohali so i'll request dr rohit gupta so you have listened to all and uh, you may just convey the points which has not been taken up with the uh, uh, by the others and he i may also add that uh, he is uh, he is uh, working as a consultant at guru ka langar ai hospital which is a very famous institute in sector 18 chandigarh so over to dr rohit gupta thank you sir for giving this opportunity to uh, share my uh, suggestion from the the starboard for corneal surgeon i'll be sharing my uh, screen uh, is it visible sir so uh, yes sir i can see that yeah so uh, visible okay so and all the like experienced surgeons they have uh, shared their views and suggestions or uh, how to improve eye banking uh, and corneal transplantation post covid era i'll be sharing few of the practical aspects uh, to improve the uh, eye banking uh, first of all the training of uh, eye bank staff is uh, one of the most important aspects uh, in improving eye banking as we know i the staff they are the backbone of any institute or any uh, organizations so as dr amit gupta also had uh, suggested like Uh, training of eye banking staff, how to don and off the PP kit and everything. So, training uh, has become very important, especially post COVID era. Like uh, frequent head washings uh, during uh, during collection of the do- uh, eye eye donors and uh, sanitizers of the hand. They should be provided with adequate number of gloves, sanitizers, and uh, disposable gowns. mask should be mandatory at all workplaces social distancing is very 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 important if healthcare worker is exposed to the covid 19 he should be quarantined for 5 to 7 days now the day has been reduced as and tested as per the government protocol initially it was 14 days now the day has been reduced so after removing the pp kits uh, adequate washing of hands use of alcohol based sanitizer is very essential Uh, rest all the suggestions that were given by uh, i bank of india in ais the corneal transplantation uh, in covid era so the resuming corneal transplantation in the post covid they requires multidisciplinary approach from i bank technicians nurses surgeons and the the new infection protocols which requires training and familiarization so patient education regarding covid 19 results and risk of transmission should be discussed thoroughly before and before undergoing corneal transplant surgery with anticipation of delay uh, in the pre operative processes and there may be cancellations of surgery also because because of transportation because of uh, lockdown and because of unavailability of the corneal tissues good quality corneal tissues so surgeons performing corneal transplantation under ga 
they have to consider using full PP and N95 mask to avoid the risk of aerosolization during incubation and activation. The last one, the most important, is the economic impact of COVID-19, which includes increased costs from the donor transport, testing, PP utility. They must be considered in the long-term planning and the sustainability of the resuming foreign transplant services. So this is a teleconsultation in COVID-19 era. It's my experience, that experience during this lockdown period. It is important to share the details of the contact details of doctor with the patients, especially in the lockdown period, so that they can have they can avoid frequent follow-ups. Uh, if they cannot come for follow-up, we, we can do video call or video conferencing, or we can also ask the photo of the operator eye of the patients. We also have to stress the importance of compliance of medications so that the graft remains clear, the, they, they have a, a less risk of graft rejection and graft failure. If they cannot come for, to the for follow-up by any means, they can have local uh, follow-up at the local ophthalmologist so that their, their, their corneal remains clear and the visibility remains maintained. So thank you. These are a few of my suggestions which I will share. So thank you, Dr. Rohit. So the, your suggestions are well taken that COVID protocols in notice they need to be followed and uh, it has to be a very coordinated yeah, effort. So it has to be a, so it has to be a very coordinated effort with all the stakeholders and you have taken up this uh, economic impact of COVID-19. So we need to I mean uh, try reducing the cost of the uh, corneal tissue we normally take from the eye banks. And uh, the teleconsultations, they are an in thing nowadays. So thank you, Dr. Rohit. So now I'll request uh, Mr. Arun Verma. He's our uh, Director of Finance and Operations to please summarize the, uh, uh, the consultation and also propose a vote of thanks. So over to Mr. Arun Verma. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Rakesh. Uh, I really feel delighted and honored to uh, thank Padam Shri Doc Dr. Vikas Mahante, respect Mahante, respected member Ajay for his you know, generosity to accept our request to join the consultation as chief guest. Thank you, sir, for joining us and for encouraging us with your blessings. He himself is in a very eminent eye surgeon of international repute. I thank our guest of honor, Padam Shri, Professor Dr. Jagatram, an eminent ophthalmologist and director PJMR Chandigarh. Sir, we are extremely grateful for all for your you know, blessing which you have always been bestowing on us in all our endeavors. I also welcome our guest of honor, Dr. Radhika Tandan, Professor of Ophthalmology, RP Center, Ames, Delhi. Ma'am, we are extremely grateful to you for always having inspired us and guided us through our efforts on the public health issues. I thank all the panelists, Dr. Ashok Sharma, Director Kornia, Center Chandigarh, Professor Dr. Shakeen Singh, Director Kornia, Center Chandigarh, Dr. Amit Gupta, Medical Director, Puranjot I Bank, Ludhiana, Professor Kornia, Cataract and Refractive Surgery Services, Advanced Eye Center, PGI, Professor Dr. Karanjit Singh, Professor of Ophthalmology, RIO, GMC, Amritsar, and Dr. Rohit Gupta. Sir, we are extremely grateful for the, you know, recommendations and suggestions and the challenges, you know, put forward by you. And uh, we will definitely include those in our recommendations which are being drafted. Dr. Jagdeep Singh Basur, I thank Dr. Jagdeep Singh Basur, SPO and PCB and VI Haryana and Dr. Rana Singh, SPNCV and VI Chandigarh for presenting the eye donation and eye banking report 2021. We feel really excited after seeing the work being done in these areas. I thank Dr. Rakesh Gupta, former Director of Health Services and Punjab and Director and President Cypher and Dr. Sonu Goyal, Professor Department of Community Medicine and School of Public Health for organizing this national consultation as well as moderating the panel. I really thank Dr. I mean, especially thanks Dr. Sonu Goyal for making suggestions with on this in this field with perspective from the public health. 
I also thank I also thank all our corneal surgeons who have been associated with the CBWF program movement since 2015. I also thank all the staff of the Cyber and PGML associated with organizing this consultation, especially Dr. Mahindra and Dr. Sar and Mr. Saro. I also thank all the participants who have joined the today's event through Zoom link as well as on the YouTube, as well as NGOs for their immense contribution in eye donation and eye banking. I thank everyone. Now, uh, as you know, our chief guests and guest of honors and our panelists have given very useful inputs on the challenges being faced under the NPDC and very relevant suggestion and recommendation to overcome these challenges to take the program further to achieve our goal. We have noted all these suggestions and recommendations and we will incorporate the same in our draft recommendations which are under preparation. We intend to share the final draft recommendations with all the participants and the experts for obtaining more inputs and suggestions to be incorporated before forwarding the same to Dr. Vikas Mahate for further pursuing with the quarter concern. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. So thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Ganji. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv. Rohit. Thank sorry. you all. Of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kesh. Dr. Sanu. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.